Good morning and praise God from whom all blessings flow. Listen, it is such an honor and pleasure to enter into your homes, your automobiles, your job, your office, wherever you may be. This broadcast is emanating to you from the Jesus is the Answer Evangelistic Church of God in Christ uh, in uh, Independent here in Los Angeles. And we just thank God for you tuning in to this time with us on today. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. God, we thank you, Lord, for uh, you uh, uh, privileged me to stand behind this sacred desk and to proclaim your word, your gospel. I thank God, Jesus, that you said that, the, uh, the, that you have built your church upon the rock and the very gates of hell should not prevail against it. There's so much attack upon the church. There's so much going on in these times and these days after we have experienced apostle Corona and Bishop uh, 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 Delta has come through here, Lord, and has, Lord, has have, have left their mark. But the, God, we thank you that you said that your church that is built upon a rock, the very gates of hell should not prevail against it. And Lord, I think you're shaking up some things. I think you're, you're, you're exposing some things as the reason why uh, the, the church is experiencing what it is experiencing on today. But we thank God that your will will be done and it must be done. And we thank you, Lord, again for this opportunity and this privilege to stand behind this sacred desk and to proclaim your word today. And I pray this be a life-changing word. I pray this word would uplift someone. I pray this word would help somebody. And Father, if there's any sick out there, Lord, that is listening to this telecast, this broadcast, I pray, God, that you would touch, heal, save, and deliver, God, in the name of Jesus. And we be so careful to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. And thank God. Amen. Again, I bring you greetings from the Jesus is the Answer Evangelistic Church of God in Christ Independent, coming to you from Los Angeles, California, where I serve as Pastor Bishop uh, Tuan Priestley Flowers. I thank you for tuning in. Listen, I pray that God hide me behind his cross and, and, and that you would not see or hear me, but you would see and hear Jesus. Amen. Because it is not about me. It's not about me but it's about Jesus because he is the answer. I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ is the answer. There's no other answer. And whatever you're going through, whatever problems, trials, or tribulations, storms of life, whatever it is, Jesus Christ is the answer. And I also want to pray for Pastor uh, uh, W. Edward Jenkins. Uh, Dr. Jenkins is a pastor of the, uh, of the historical great uh, Victory Baptist Church at 4802 uh, South McKinley. I want to pray for the Victory Baptist Church family. Uh, they experienced a terrible fire. We don't really know the cause of what happened. Uh, we do know about a, maybe a week ago, some guy that got caught uh, set a palm tree on fire right there on the corner of McKinley and um, 48th Street. And we pray that he did not come back and 
and torch the church or whatever, but we just pray for that church. The church has been there for 78 years. Uh, the building has been there over 100 years, but the church has been in that building for 78 years. And we just want to pray for the Victory Church, Baptist Church family, our prayers from Jesus is the Answer uh, Church. We are praying with you and Pastor uh, Jenkins. Amen. Uh, Reverend Esther's. I grew up at the Community Baptist Church. And we fellowship with them back in the days with uh, Pastor A.A. A. Peters, late Pastor A.A. A. Peters. Amen. Uh, when I was a little kid, praise God. And that was a friend of Pastor Esther's. And we just want to pray for the current pastor now, uh, Pastor Jenkins. Uh, our prayers are with you, sir. And we just know that you shall rise from these ashes. God bless you and may God keep you is our prayer. Listen, I just want to encourage someone real quickly on this great third Sunday uh, morning of September 2022, I just want to encourage somebody to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I don't care what you're battling. I don't care what you're going through. Listen, this battle is not yours, but it belongs to God. And I want you to keep in mind that the storm will not last always. Trouble will not last always. Yes, Man is born of a woman, is of a few days, and full of trouble. It said full of trouble, but not trouble always. Amen. That's a big difference. That's a big difference. Now, sometime in our lives, listen, I, I, I know it feels like we're experiencing trouble always. It feels like, you know, when will I ever get a break? And, and I know there have been times, you know, in my own life, I've always asked God, said, Lord, when am I going to get a break? When is it going to be my time for... Uh, uh, an exit of trouble. When is it going to be my time, amen, to experience more of your peace? It just seems like that song that Douglas Miller wrote, the storms keep on raging in my life. And I used to criticize that song. I know I've I, I, I criticized that song on my, on my, uh, in, during my ministry, and I probably shouldn't have done that. I, I know I shouldn't have done it because back then, I didn't really quite understand that song and that testimony, but now I understand what uh, Brother Douglas Miller was 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 uh, um, conveying through that song. Uh, the storm just keeps on raging in my life, and it didn't mean that the storm was always there, the same storm. But he said, "Storms keep on raging." You know, we don't really listen sometimes. There was an S on the word storms keep on raging because I know we say storms come and go and storms don't last always. Uh, 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 dark clouds will pass and so forth and so on. And I was rebuking the song and, you know, I, I should have done that because now I understand as I've grown older uh, that storms do and they, and they will keep raging in your life. And you just wonder, Lord, what am I going to get some peace? What am I, what am I going to get a break? I mean, my goodness gracious. Woo. And these storms can be hectic. They can be very painful. They can be very hurtful. These storms can, can, can rock your faith. These storms can shake your faith. They could jar you. Amen. But you got to be like Abraham. The Bible said he staggered not at the promises of God. We can't stagger. When these storms come, we have to know the promise of God that trouble don't last always. We're going to have to know, as Douglas was saying, that uh, 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 the storms keep on raging, but our soul must be anchored in him. Our souls must be anchored in the Lord, no matter what's going on, because the Lord allowed these storms to come, amen, to make us strong. Believe it or not, believe it or not, that's why the storms come, to make us strong. These storms come to develop us and to help in our lives to make us strong and strengthen us, amen, that we would begin to, with, with, once we would stand one storm, we would stand another, we would stand another, we would stand another one. My God, look at how powerful you have become. Look at the strength that you gain. You, you, you may think in your mind, your, your human mind, it's beating me down and it may, it may beat you. Storms do, they do beat. It said that when they was in the middle of that uh, uh, storm out there, that Eurachidon storm uh, in, 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 the, in the book of Luke, in the book of Mark, and Jesus said, let us go to the other side. And they said that the, the, the waves beating against the boat, the waves beating against the boat, then the waves start feeling the boat. 
it started getting into the boat. And then the boat was about to sink. So sometimes you feel that these storms are beating you and these waves are beating you. And now it, 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 the boat is filling up so much to, man, you, 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 you're about to sink and you feel you're about to sink. It's okay. Because if Jesus is in your boat, man, you better ask somebody. <laughs> you are going to be all right. Everything is going to be, you're going to come through that storm. You are going to make it to the other side. If you just hold on to God's unchanging, if you just begin to just hold on and don't doubt God. When Peter was walking on that water and a storm rose, as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, Peter was able to walk over to where Jesus was. As soon as he took his eyes off Jesus and them, those distractions of the storm, the distractions of what's going on, the distractions of, of, of the pain, the distractions of, of what people are saying and what people are whispering in your ears, you begin to lose sight of Jesus and you will sink. But thank God for Jesus that he wretched down and he picked Peter up and they both walked back to the boat together. Hallelujah, glory to God. Somebody needs to know that even though you feel like you're sinking, hear me now, because of the storm and because you have gotten distracted and you have allowed the distraction of the storm to distract you, You've taken your eyes off Jesus. If you would just holler out, Lord, save me, and focus back in on him, Jesus will pick you up right where you are. And y'all both will walk to the boat safely. Safe in his arm. That's what it's all about. Being safe in his arms. I think they have a song, a song out there that says that the perfect will of God is is, is, is to be safe in his arms. And being safe in his arms is the perfect will of God. Hallelujah, somebody. Oh, somebody ought to say amen. If you, if you believe it, somebody ought to say amen. And I want to read a little scripture here for you this morning to encourage you in Isaiah chapter 35. That's Isaiah chapter 35. And uh, I want to begin at verse 3. Isaiah chapter 35, verse 3. And the Bible reads, Strengthen ye the weak hands, and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are fearful, I'm sorry, say to them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong and fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with recompense. He will come and save you. And that word save in the Hebrew means to deliver you. God will deliver you. But you are to be encouraged today if you feel weak, if you're feeling any type of doubt in your mind that God is real, I'm here to tell you he is real. How do you know he's real? Because he's real in my soul. That's how I know he's real. You see, we're going to have to experience God. People are always asking, well, how do you know that this is this God is real, the God of the Bible, the God of the, the Holy Bible? How do y'all know he's real? Because he's real in my soul. Well, how do you know he's real in your soul? I've experienced God. I've experienced being filled with the Holy Ghost. I've experienced his hand of salvation on me. I'm here to tell you that you're going to have to experience God to know that God is real today. They say, they got another song that says, I feel him in my heart. I feel him in my hands. I feel him in my feet. I feel him all over me. There are times where you feel the tangible. You, you feel God's tangible presence. You feel God's tangible touch. But you got to hold on to his hand. Whose hands? God's unchanging hand. God's hand doesn't change. We, you can play cards. You can play whatever. And you may change hands or whatever. 
Uh, we, we exchange things and we change hands, but God's hand never changes. God says, I'm the Lord by God, I change not. Jesus said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. Thank God that we serve a God that does not change. So I encourage you to say, is be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Continue to put on the whole armor of God, no matter what you're going through, no matter what storm you're fighting. Keep your eyes on the prize. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus Christ. Set your face like a flint. And don't turn to the right and don't turn to the left. Keep your eyes on Jesus. And watch him see you through. Oh, it may get tough. Oh, it may get tough. Oh, the winds will challenge you. The storm will challenge you. But I'm here to tell you, it doesn't matter what the challenge is. It doesn't matter how hard the winds may come. It doesn't matter how hard the waves may beat up against you. And sometimes you get out there in those typhoons or whatever, man, and that wave will knock you over. But I'm here to tell you, get up. Stand up, for your God is nigh. Your God is nigh thee, your God is near, and your God is there to save you. Jesus is there to deliver you, just like he delivered Paul. When he began to sink in that water, Paul cried out to the Lord, help me. And the Lord Jesus Christ reached down and took Paul by the hand, and they both walked back to the boat on water, on the very thing that distracted Paul. They walked on the on top of the very thing that was Paul's distraction. But it takes Jesus to walk with you. It takes Jesus to walk with you. You can't walk alone. You can't be independent of Jesus Christ and expect it and expect to make it. You can't. You can't. Oh, I'm telling you, you can't. Sometimes it may cause us to be angry and we get frustrated and we get fearful and we get that fear and that frustration cause us to be mad and then we call ourselves getting mad at God and then we say God why me just like the Victory Baptist Church experienced that fire and I know they're probably saying God why victory why why us and like Pastor Jenkins said today on a broadcast well why not us All things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and who are the call according to his purpose. But you got to understand that all things work together for our good. All things is working together for your good. But you got to keep your hands in the hands of the Lord. Oh, yes, you got you have to keep your hands in the hands of the Lord. You cannot be independent of God or independent of his son and think that you're going to make it. You're not going to make it. You're going to sink and die in that storm. And you don't have to die in the storm. And that's the name of this, the topic of this message. I think I forgot to, you don't have to die in the storm. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And over here in Isaiah 35, it says, strengthen ye the hands of the weak. And confirm the, the feeble needs. That's our job. That's our job is to strengthen you through the word of God. To strengthen you through encouragement. Strengthen you through prayer. And holding your hand and bearing the weak. Being our brother and sister's keepers. That's our job. Not to love them. Amen with this fake love. The Bible says over there in Romans 12 and 9, I believe, let love be without dissimulation. We talk about love and I love you and I, I, I may get mad at you or whatever every now and then. But 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 the Bible says, let not love be with dissimulation. You know what that means? Hypocritical love, fake love. It's how you express your love. And that's why it's so hard for people to really come to Christ and to love Jesus and to and, and, and to love God, I'm not talking about uh, 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 what the Bible says. Uh, uh, what does the Bible say about uh, uh, 
rebuke is better than secret love. I'm not talking about that. Sometimes you need to be rebuked. Sometimes you, you know, you, you, the preacher need to rebuke you or your brother, your sister need to rebuke you openly and not secretly. But I'm talking about this fake love. You know, you talking about folks behind their back, you gossiping, you making up lies, you, you know, you, you running around here causing division among the brothers. You know, you just keep mess going in your mouth, especially a man. I can't stand it when a man just, just blah, 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 blah. You sound like an old woman. Let love be without dissimulation, preacher. You preaching on love, but let love be without dissimulation. Don't be hypocritical about your love. You, didn't, you left that part out. But getting back to this subject, be strong and be, in, be, be of good courage. God will save you and whatever you're going through, it doesn't matter what you're going through. I know you like to pay your bills on time. I know you don't like for things to be late and you and you don't you don't like late charges and all that kind of stuff. But I'm gonna tell you, sometimes you gotta call the Edison company, you gotta call your light company and tell them, listen, I need two more weeks. And it's okay. And God will provide and make a way. Don't sit there and cry. Don't sit there, amen, and just give up. Ask for an extension. Even on these cell phones now, they give you two, two or three days extension on your cell phone. And if you don't get the money on your two days extension, you know what? Let them shut it off. <laughs> and when you get paid, turn it back on. I mean, what are we crying for? What are we, why do we let these little things, amen, bother us to a certain, to a, to a point to where we just want to give up on God? We just want to give up on life. I didn't been through some things in, in my in my life. Man, I didn't been through some stuff. And I haven't really testified yet since I've been pastoring. I have not testified yet about the stuff I've been through and what I've had to endure and what God had promised me while I was going through what I was going through. I haven't even testified of it yet. I'm just, you know, just waiting on the right time to just drop that testimony. But I'm here to tell you, my brother and my sister, y'all got to be encouraged. Don't you give up this fight. Don't you throw in the towel. Don't you say, it's over for me. It's not over until it's over. I don't care what nobody say. I don't care what people try to come in your life and try to, you know, whisper in your ear that this is it. Like Michael Jackson, this is it. And you're done. I ain't going back to the church. I'm the first person we want to throw on the on the on the chopping block is the church and God. That's the first, that's the first thing we want to throw on the chopping block. We want to do because God seemed like He didn't come through for me. Shame on you. Shame on you. We are living in a cursed world. The world is cursed. Go back and read that over in Job. Man is born of a woman and is of a few days and full of trouble. Have you ever read the account what Jesus went through? I'm talking about God manifested in the flesh. Have you ever read the account of what he went through? Do you really understand what Easter resurrection uh, uh, week is all about? Have you ever really thought about the account of his beating that he took on the whipping post in Pilate's judgment hall? And for what? Have you thought about how they pulled his beard, spit in his face, probably cussed him, slapped him, beat his back so bad till his back looked like ground, raw beef, bloody raw ground beef, just beat him for no reason. And you know what the Bible says? And I believe it's in the same book, Isaiah. And it pleased the Father. That they did that to his son. It pleased his father. Why would something like that please God? He, he, he was taking it that we might be saved. You and me. Jesus took that that you and me might be saved today. That we would have a, 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 a that we would have peace with God again through him. 
So he had to take the beating. He had to take the spitting in the face. He had to take the pulling of his beard. He had to take a man them punching him in the face and, and cussing at him. And then nailed him to the cross. If Jesus went through all that suffering, what make you think that we would never go through no suffering on this world? You, you got to, we, we got it twisted. We got this thing backwards. Oh, if Jesus suffered that, we don't have to suffer. The Bible didn't say that. He said, if you suffer with me, now this is what Jesus said. If you suffer with me, you will reign with me. Somewhere over there in the Psalms it said, we've been man do it for a night, which is, means a season. To do it for a night, which means for a season. That doesn't necessarily mean when 24 hour period, when sun uh, go up and then come down. That don't mean 24 hours. Do it for a night means a season. That could mean a couple of days, a couple of months, a couple of years. <laughs> Who knows? Whatever that season may be. But it says, joy will come in the morning. That means that season will be over. So you have to hold on through the, through the storm. God not always takes the storm away. God doesn't always blow the storm away. Sometimes he'll help us through the storm. If you have death in your family by some, you, someone you really love, God will help you through that death each and every day. He will help you through it. But you have to turn your attention to him. You have to just really keep your hands in his hand. You have to develop a strong prayer life, a communication line between you and God, between you and his spirit that, that's supposed to dwell within you. You have to develop that communication line through a prayer life. Sometimes you have to turn the plate over, fast and pray, and don't eat for a while. Shut this body down. Shut your mind down. And so your mind will be in a place where whatever comes your way, I know that God is with me. I'm encouraged even in the midst of what I'm going through. These are the things we have to really change and develop in our lives and i pray this message has been a blessing to you it won't be long today i think we only about 25 minutes or 30 minutes long today that's it i just want to encourage somebody i don't want to get into a whole lot of preaching i don't want to oh yeah i can do it i can do it you know i can hum with the organ or without the organ i can it don't make me no difference oh i can now nah, you know i can hoop with the best of them I didn't come here to hoop this morning. I come to encourage somebody. I come to encourage somebody. Psalms, I'm sorry, Isaiah chapter 35, verses 3 and 4. 3 and 4. There's more to that, to this, to this, to this chapter. But I just want you to read those two verses. And I pray that you will position yourself. You have to position yourself by faith. For God, as it said over in, in the fourth chapter. It says, even God with recompense, he will come and save you. We have to persist, position ourselves for God to come and save us. That's through our faith through his son, Jesus Christ. And he will save with you. He will deliver you whatever you're going through. God will deliver you. And I pray that this word has delivered you today. I pray that this word has reminded you of the God, the mighty God that we serve. The God that we serve? Oh my goodness. The earth trembles. At the God we serve, the water rolls back. This is a powerful God that we serve. God, Jehovah, God, Yahweh, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through his spirit, by faith, Oh, Lord, have mercy. If you believe it, you are the same man. And when we position ourselves, when we get in position for God to save us, we have to have a yes, Lord, spirit. We have to have a yes, Lord, spirit. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. If you're out there, come on, sing it with me. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Even in the midst of what you're going through, you ought to tell him, thank you, Lord. Come on, tell him, thank you, Lord. You ought to tell the Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You've been so good. In the midst of what you're going through, I want you to think back. Lord, you've been so good. Oh, you've been so good. 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 Come on, position yourself for God to deliver you. God to save you. And lift your hands and say, yeah. Yes, come on, position yourself. Yes, 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 Lord, yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 Lord. Come on and tell the Lord yes. Come on and lift your hands and tell the Lord yes. You got to position yourself for God to save you, for God to deliver you. As it says over in Isaiah, amen, the 35th chapter. Hallelujah, that, that, that fourth verse. It said, God will come with recompense and he will deliver you. He will save you. But you have to position yourself and just position yourself with a yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, whatever you say, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I know you're able to save me. I know you're able to deliver me, Lord. But even in the midst of what I'm going through, yes, Lord, because I know you're able to get me through what I'm going through. You will walk with me. As you did with those Hebrew boys, those three, you went through the fire with them. You didn't deliver them out of the fire, but you delivered them through the fire. Yes, Lord. You walk with them through the fire. Yes, Lord. I have a yes, Lord, in my spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's all I have for you today. Listen, if you desire prayer, I want you to call my cell phone. 562-208-9149. And I want to pray with you. Somebody might need prayer of encouragement. You might need prayer for whatever you're going through in your life. You might just need a word. If you if you need me to talk with you, whatever. My phone is always on. If I can't answer because I'm doing a funeral service or something and I can't pick up right then, leave your name and telephone number and a brief message. I will call you back. I will call you back and I will pray with you. I will speak with you. And whatever it is I can do, if it's in my power to do it, I will help you. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? That number is area code 562-208-9149. That is our church number and also my cell number. Please give me a call, 562-208-9149. If you desire prayer, I want to pray with you. Listen. All of you out there know that uh, we're trying to rebuild. We're trying to, uh, uh, what word, re revamp. Amen. Uh, Jesus' answer is trying to rebuild and revamp. Um, we are seeking, uh, 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 many churches have closed. Uh, many churches, uh, people have not gone back for whatever reason. But if this ministry has been a blessing to you, and this pastor has been a blessing to you. Listen, we need your help. We not only need your financial help, but we need you to come and be a part of us. Come on and be a part of us. We want to reopen our building. We want to go back in that building. We want to go in there full force. We want to, we want to go out and canvas uh, 
the area and knock on doors and let people know that we're in the community and that we're there to serve. Amen. We want to pass out tracts. I can't do this alone. Even Jesus sent them out by twos. <laughs> I'm only one person. So we need your help. Call that number. Area code 562-208-9149. That's area code 2. I'm sorry, 562-208-9149. If you live in the Los Angeles area, Compton, Paramount, Long Beach, <laughs> Downey, praise God, Linwood, amen. Uh, uh, Inglewood, praise God, we're right there surrounded in that in that area and we need your help we want to rebuild this church we want to re-establish it we need some charter members that is going to help us amen get the ministry off the ground i need your help i'm reaching out to you i need your help i need your help we don't want to continue this online you know this is going to play out one day and it's already playing out in so many instances you know people uh, you know, they don't watch it online like they did when the pandemic first hit. Amen. But we want to get started in person, praise God. And we want to go out and, and win the loss. Amen. We also want to feed the hungry. There's a lot we want to do, but I can't do it alone. I need some help. I need some members. I need some help. I need some charter members. Praise God to help. Amen. Establish the church especially financially we need we need we we have to pay you know mortgage and rent praise god nothing is free nothing is not even for the church it's not free well god will bless you god well god blesses the church through people he blesses the church through you through your substances through yourself god said he loves what a cheerful giver he loves a cheerful giver so i pray that whatever god has has a purpose in your heart to give today listen i need your support I need your financial support. I'm not one of the ones that buy cars and shoes and uh, Gucci bags and all that kind of stuff with church money. I've never done it. I never will do it. Listen, I need your help. I need your help. My income is okay, but it can't pay for it all. It can't pay for it all. I have to live in a home. I have to uh, pay car insurance like everybody else. I put this high $5 gas in the car just like everybody else. Hey man, I have light gas and, and water at home and trash, uh, uh, all of that stuff, you know, and, and life insurance and all that kind of stuff. So y'all won't have to be, hey amen, passing the basket when I die. Praise God. I have bills. Hey amen. I have kids. Praise God. I have a fiance. I have a lot of responsibility. Praise God. And listen, and I can't do this on my own. And I'm, I'm crying out to you today. I'm pleading with you today. Please send an offer. Send an offering. But better yet, come be a part of us. We need you. We need bodies. We don't just need money. We need you. We need you. Amen. And if you ain't saved, come on. And we, we, we can work on your salvation. We can work on your deliverance. Amen. And, and disciple you and send you out to make more disciples. If you are a sinner, we especially want you. Absolutely, we want you to come and be a part of Jesus is the answer evangelistic church. We need you. And we want to help save you and deliver you. And disciple you that you will go out and make other disciples. Amen. It was prophesied to me years ago. Uh, a man that was, he was a Cuban gentleman. He couldn't speak no English. And he had to get another guy to come over and help him interpret. Because I didn't understand him. Uh, but he said he had been watching me for a while and he asked me questions about my life and I was wondering where he was going you know he's asking me questions about my life and I confirmed it yes you're absolutely right and uh, things he was saying was true and you know what he said at the end of that he says God has a ministry for you that the people couldn't be numbered he says I he says in my dream I tried to count all those people and I couldn't count them now I'm, I'm still waiting on that. Praise God. It's been how many years ago? That's been over uh, uh, 25 years, 25 or 30 years ago. He prophesied that to me. Amen. And I'm still waiting. You know, uh, I don't know what God is going to do. And then God gave me a dream. Jesus, the answer, evangelistic church, J-I-A. I saw those on the doors, those glass doors. Amen. As you come into the sanctuary, I saw that those emblems. And it's J-I-A means Jesus is the answer. Amen. Evangelistic Church. So here we are. 
And I'm, I'm asking and I'm soliciting not only your prayers, but I'm soliciting, amen, your help. I need you to come and help me so we can take care of the needs of our community. Listen, because everybody's not doing it. You know, a lot of these churches are not doing it. They only meet on Sunday. They close their doors. They come back next Sunday or, or either on Wednesday night. And that's it. They have a choir rehearsal or something in between. They don't go out in the community and do nothing. I will call you back and I will pray with you. I will speak with you. And whatever it is I can do, if it's in my power to do it, I will help you. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? That number is area code 562-208-9149. That is our church number and also my cell number. Please give me a call, 562-208-9149. If you desire prayer, I want to pray with you. Listen, all of you out there know that uh, we're trying to rebuild. We're trying to, uh, uh, what word, re revamp. Amen. Uh, Jesus' answer is trying to rebuild and revamp. Um, we are seeking, uh, 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 many churches have closed. Uh, many churches, uh, people have not gone back for whatever reason. But if this ministry has been a blessing to you, and this pastor has been a blessing to you. Listen, we need your help. We not only need your financial help, but we need you to come and be a part of us. Come on and be a part of us. We want to reopen our building. We want to go back in that building. We want to go in there full force. We want to, we want to go out and canvas uh, the area and knock on doors and let people know that we're in the community and that we're there to serve. Amen. We want to pass out tracts. I can't do this alone. Even Jesus sent them out by twos. <laughs> I'm only one person. So we need your help. Call that number. Area code 562-208-9149. That's area code 2. I'm sorry, 562-208-9149. If you live in the Los Angeles area, Compton, Paramount, Long Beach, Downey, praise God, Linwood, amen, uh, uh, Inglewood, praise God, we're right there, surrounded in that, in that area. And we need your help. We want to rebuild this church. We want to reestablish it. We need some charter members that is going to help us, amen, get the ministry off the ground. I need your help. I'm reaching out to you. I need your help. I need your help. We don't want to continue this online. You know, this is going to play out one day, and it's already playing out in so many instances. You know, people, uh, you know, they don't watch it online like they did when the pandemic first hit. Amen. But we want to get started in person, praise God, and we want to go out and, and win the loss. Amen. We also want to feed the hungry. There's a lot we want to do, but I can't do it alone. I need some help. I need some members. I need some help. I need some charter members. Praise God to help. Amen. Establish the church, especially financially. We need, we need, we, we have to pay, you know, mortgage and rent. Praise God. Nothing is free. Nothing is not even for the church. It's not free. Well, God will bless you. God, well, God blesses the church through people. He blesses the church through you, through your substances. Yourself. God said he loves what? A cheerful giver. He loves a cheerful giver. So I pray that whatever God has, has a purpose in your heart to give today, listen, I need your support. I need your financial support. I'm not one of the ones that buy cars and shoes and uh, Gucci bags and all that kind of stuff with church money. I've never done it. I never will do it. Listen, I need your help. I need your help. My income is okay, but it can't pay for it all. It can't pay for it all. I have to live in a home. I have to uh, pay car insurance like everybody else. I have to put this high $5 gas in the car just like everybody else. Hey, man, I have light gas and, and water at home and trash. Uh, uh, all of that stuff, you know, and, and life insurance and all that kind of stuff. So y'all won't have to be, hey, man, passing the basket when I die. Praise God. I have bills. Hey, man, I have kids. Praise God. I have a fiance. I have a lot of responsibility. Praise God. And listen, and I can't do this on my own. And I'm, I'm crying out to you today. I'm pleading with you today. Please send an offering. Send an offering. But better yet, come be a part of us. We need you 
We need bodies. We don't just need money. We need you. We need you. Amen. And if you ain't saved, come on. And we, we, we can work on your salvation. We can work on your deliverance. Amen. And, and disciple you and send you out to make more disciples. If you are a sinner, we especially want you. Absolutely, we want you to come and be a part of Jesus is the answer evangelistic church. We need you. And we want to help save you and deliver you and disciple you that you will go out and make other disciples. Amen. It was prophesied to me years ago. Uh, a man that was, he was a Cuban gentleman. He couldn't speak no English. And he had to get another guy to come over and help him interpret because I didn't understand him. Uh, but he said he had been watching me for a while and he asked me questions about my life. And I was wondering where he was going. You know, he's asking me questions about my life and I confirmed it. Yes, you're absolutely right. And uh, things he was saying was true. And you know what he said at the end of that? He says, God has a ministry for you that the people couldn't be numbered. He says, I, he says, in my dream, I tried to count all those people and I couldn't count them. Now, I'm, I'm still waiting on that. Praise God. It's been how many years ago? That's been over uh, uh, 25 years, 25 or 30 years ago. He prophesied that to me. Amen. And I'm still waiting. You know, uh, I don't know what God is going to do. And then God gave me a dream. Jesus, the answer, evangelistic church, J-I-A. I saw those on the doors, the glass doors. Amen. As you come into the sanctuary, I saw that, those emblems. And it's J-I-A means Jesus is the answer. Amen. Evangelistic church. So here we are. And I'm, I'm asking and I'm soliciting not only your prayers, but I'm soliciting, amen, your help. I need you to come and help me so we can take care of the needs of our community. Listen, because everybody's not doing it. You know, a lot of these churches are not doing it. They only meet on Sunday. They close their doors. They come back next Sunday or, or either on Wednesday night. And that's it. They have choir rehearsal or something in between. They don't go out in the community and do nothing. Praise God. But we want to be a blessing to the community. Amen. But I need your help. I can't do it alone. I can't do it alone. So I, I need some members. Amen. To come and join up with us and to be a part of us. We need sinners to come that we can uh, uh, get delivered and saved and prove to the world, amen, and prove to that community that God is still in the saving business, amen. And we also need your financial help, please. If you would send an offering, amen, we would really appreciate it. 5904 South San Pedro Street, Los Angeles, California, 9003. The zip code is 90003, amen. Again, that address is 5904. South San Pedro Street, Los Angeles, California, 90003. Amen. Uh, the phone number again, if you want to zail from your bank, all you got to do is zail it to 562-208-9149. If you don't know how to use Zelle, just call your bank and you give them that telephone number and uh, they'll walk you through the process of zailing, of Zelle pay. If you'd like to zail us, Amen and offering. That phone number again is 562-208-9149, Twan Flowers. Even though it doesn't go to me, we have to put a name there so they'll know, you know, uh, who's responsible to receive those funds. Also, if you'd like to cash out us, dollar sign, J-I-A-E-M, dollar sign, J I. A E M. Amen. And all those are low casing. There's nothing capital. Everything is low casing. If you would cash app us, we would gladly receive, amen, your offering and your donations. We thank you with the love of the Lord. I just believe, God, that uh, 2023 is going to be a more prosperous year. God is going to do great things with Jesus, the answer, evangelist, and church. I, I, I just feel it in my spirit. And that's why I'm trying to prepare now and begin to ask people to come and be a part of us, be a part of this move of God, what we're trying to do. I'm asking you, if you left your church for whatever reason or your church shut down or whatever happened because of this pandemic, listen, we are still open. Uh, we're doing things online right now, but we're eager and anxious to get back into our building. Praise God. We're eager and anxious to get back into our building. Amen. So you come on and be a part. And you'll help us get back into that building. Amen. Send an offering. 
send a donation that will help us get back into that building. And if you desire prayer, again, please call 562-208-9149. Listen, it's been an honor uh, uh, sitting here encouraging you this morning. I pray that this word uh, has blessed somebody this morning. And listen, don't you give up. I think it's Mayor Omar Bradley. He always, every week, he puts uh, a saying up, never give up. Never give up. Listen to me. Don't you give up. It's too early in the game. It's too early in the hour. Don't you give up. Even when it's late in the hour, don't you give up. And as Mayor Omar Bradley say, never give up. Never give up. You hang on in there, and God is going to see you through I love you with the love of the Lord. And always remember this one thing, as I always close. Don't you be caught dead without Jesus. And once again, all the information is going to come up on the screens. Amen. You can push the pause button and pause your computer, your phone, or whatever you're watching this on, your tablet. Praise God. Write that information down where you can uh, 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 get prayer requests. You can send your prayer requests. And also, if you want to send us a monetary donation or a monetary offering, all that information is going to come up on the screen. All you got to do is pause your device, whatever you're watching this on, amen, and write that information down, praise God, and we'll look forward to it. And we will return that gift with prayer. We thank you. We love you. God bless you.